Right. Hey. Go. Okay, my name is uh, Mike Uzina of Menorcan Magic. I'm here in the nation's oldest city, St. Augustine, Florida. And what I'd like to do in this video today, because I get a lot of I get a lot of requests from folks who would like to learn how to start a handmade net. So I thought that's what I would do today. Is although I've got videos on the subject, but I th thought I'd really start uh, show you the real beginning of it. And I've got this thing set up in stages because what I want to do is I want to uh, work this thing from the actual from the first knot right through to the point where we start the widenings, and that's the important part of it, because without widenings and that, you net, you're going to have nothing but a sock. But anyway, just a net is a continuous circle. A handmade net is a continuous circle, and that's what I want to demonstrate to you. Uh, now, see what I've done? I've cut, I double my line. Just You just want to take whatever line you want to use, because this is the line that's going to hold that horn onto that net. So it's very important that you put something. I use this is this is a 30 pound test Dacron. I like to use Dacron uh, for that for that purpose because the knot it ties a really nice knot and it won't slip. It won't uh, slip and slide. So with that said you can see that this is double. And I've just simply took the two pieces ends and I've tied it together. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to secure this to my doorknob. And I want to get, but uh, I call this a knitting needle. People call it call it uh, a shuttle. Doesn't matter. It's one and the same thing. So what I'm going to do to start this, I'm going to start with one knot. I'm going to tie a few knots, and then I'm going to go on to stage two for this for the uh, sake of time. So the way you start this thing, you can see what I've done. This is called a tail. You want a tail that hangs down because. That's part, that's what uh, uh, completes that circle each time. You're going to tie the tail to this, which I will be demonstrating. Now, to start this thing, all I'm going to simply do, I'm going to come up here, I'm going to just tie a knot. All right, that's the first knot of this net right there. That is starting. I'm going to start with number one. And uh, when a seven-foot net is finished, you're looking, you're looking at probably... Um, 400 plus. Okay, and you want to double tie these. I tie one and I'm coming here and I'm going to double tie it. The first row you want to double tie them because you do not want those to slip. Now, for starting this thing, most likely you're not going to have the luxury of having the handmade needles that my partner uh, Phil Castillo and I'm a fellow net maker that's working with me on this thing. Uh, we make all of our own tools, but for, for this purpose, I want to just show you, you can buy these things, these are, uh, Jan's Net Craft sells them, there's other people that sell them, uh, you can buy these, you know, off the internet, along with the plastic needles. So, this is a one inch gauge, this is going to be a mullet net, and what, that's what we fish for down here on the east coast and around, you know, north, northeast Florida, is mullet. So, what I'm going to do, you see I've already tied this knot, I'm going to slide my gauge right up to it, right up tight to that tail. Then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to come in between. Make sure you stay in between both of them. And I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to pull this down. Can you see that good, Phil? I'm going to pull this down like that even. And I'm going to throw us just a simple knot. This is, this is the knot that's been around for thousands of years here. This is the old knot. I'm going to show you both knots as we go along. And I'm going to double tie this. I'm going to double tie it. All right. That's actually that is the first mesh. That's the first mesh. Then I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna in between again. And I'm gonna come down. A little slower. Alright. As you can see, mesh number two, and I'm gonna come in between. Now there's two ways of doing this. Or this knot. There's two ways of doing it. The first one I just take and tie a double knot. You have to, as you see. The other way of doing this is you can come in here like this, in between. Make sure you stay in between. You bring this down. All right. Keep your little gap there where you can see. You throw them. You throw your mesh like this. One time, come through it, and you come through it a second time. 
come through a second time, that ties a double knot also, all in one motion. Either way you want to do it. All right, I'm just going to tie a couple more because I want to show you something else before we move to the next stage, which will be the completion of the first row, as you can see. I'm going to come in here. All right, one more. You see what I'm doing? You want to keep these the same distance. That's important to keep these the same distance. I'm going to show you how to check that one more time. Here's the double, the double knot. This ties the double knot. Well, you got to pull these tight. It's important. If you don't want slip knots, you have to you have to pull them tight. Now. Uh, and what's important, you don't want to fill this gauge up with, with uh, meshes. Maybe tie four, five, or six. And I'm going to pull them off of here where you can see what you've got. Now, as I mentioned about keeping these the same, you want these to stay the same length. In other words, you want the, the, you want the first and the last. Can you see that good, Phil? I'm going to zoom in. Hold steady. Yeah, you, you see? Can you see what I'm doing? See how those knots are even? That's what you want to see. Here's number one, and we're going to go on in a minute and tie the 42nd one, which completes the first row and the start of the circle. So here we are. You saw what I did. I took them off. I come in here like this, and you want to periodically do this. Every time that you uh, uh, tie five, uh, four, five, or six, now I'm going to tell you, show you what you do. If you get off, for instance, if they're not even, and if they're too, you know, if it's too short, then what you want, then, uh, then you'll want to bring your gauge back this way. And when you pick this mesh up, you know, you'll, you'll want to come down like this. See what I'm doing? I'm stretching that thing, making it bigger. If it was, if it was the other way, if it was too long, then you're going to come in here like this, tilt it the other way. Do it again, but rotate your hand to the left. Yeah. So like, yeah, you go. Keep it like that so they can see it. Okay. See what I did, if necessary, and you probably will, because I have to. All right, I'm going to put this down now. Again, for this. Now, we're going to move on to the next stage of what I want to show you. On the, on the trail of, of starting a net, and you leave it to Beaver, I would get it all tangled up. Look at that. Phil, did you do that? <laughs> not me not okay me. all right now this is uh the second part of it as you can see that i have just assuming i continued on that what i have here is probably and uh phil look at this see where i'm at see how i've kept this thing straight all the way let me zoom in yeah let me get this where where they can see can you see that phil coming in hold on see how i've got those nice and even there yep now and what you want to do and what's vitally important to you is uh, I like a net. Some of these people are making nets with less meshes to start. That means you're going to have less webbing. You're going to have a less full net. Uh, I, I start with 42 in the top instead of some of them are putting in the 30s. But anyway, now <clears throat> to be sure where I'm at and be absolutely sure that you don't put not enough or too many, you're going to count it. Let's see what I've got here. So I've got... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, three, twenty-four, five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine. Now, I gotta tie two more. To get forty-two, you're gonna tie 41, and then when, when, when I complete this circle, my first circle, uh, I'm going to tie the mash together. Now I'll move on to my next gauge. I'm using different gauges here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to continue, assume we're still on that first net. Assume we're on that first net. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tie, what did I have, 39, Phil? 39. 39. I'm going to tie two more, 39, 40, and 41. I'm going to come down here like this. Now 
notice that uh, this this is a handmade needle that Phil and I make these things all the time. This is made out of black ebony, very beautiful. You want to make needles out of hardwood. All right, that was 40. Now we're going to tie 41. Double knot. Double knot. That last knot, just like the first one, was a double knot. All right, there's 41. I'm not going to recount that because I'm confident that there is indeed 41. The reason I'm so adamant about make sure you get the right amount of mashes here is because it'll affect the whole net. Because you, when you put your widens in, you start out, they're going to be three apart. If you've got one less or one too many, then it, it, uh, it, it, it stays with you the whole net. Okay, now, here we go. The last final check. Hold it steady. Can you see it? Yep. See how pretty those are even. That's what you want to see right there. Now, now what you want to see is I'm going to complete, I'm going to complete the circle. Now, there are people who take, when they get to this point, they simply just turn this thing over and knit back the other way. Back and two, back and two, back and two. The thing is wide open all the way to the, to the end. Then they come in and sew it together. That creates a seam. Yes, you don't, I don't care to see a seam. This is the way I do it. I, th I feel confident this is the best way to do it or I wouldn't be telling you. Uh, now, I'm gonna take the two ends the tail, which is hanging down, and the line on the needle, and I'm gonna throw a, I'm gonna throw a circle. See what I'm doing? I'm just, it's just gonna be a knot. I'm gonna come around like this. I'm gonna, you see that good, Phil? Yeah. Then I'm gonna catch the, catch the tail, pull it through. Can you see what we're gonna have? We're gonna zoom in. Can you see that, Phil? What we're gonna have? See what I'm doing? We're gonna have a knot. Now. Here comes the important thing. You must keep these things straight. You want this thing to be the same length. In order to do that, I don't need to do it, but I'm going to show you for your sake because you're going to need to. And that is you make sure you want to get your gauge and make sure that you bring this thing where you're going to tie it. You want, this, you want these knots, and I'll show you real good here in a minute. Because you have to adjust this a little bit. Don't tie it real tight. Because you now I can I can move I can pull this thing or, or stretch it either way. Because it's hard to get it perfect the first time. I'm gonna stick my gauge in here. And you see I gotta pull this back a little bit. Can you see that, Phil? Yeah. I gotta pull it just a little teeny bit, a little bit. Now, observe. I want that knot right on the leading edge of this mesh board. Right, hold can it steady. You see that? Hold it steady. Did you see that? See where that mesh is? You want it right on the leading edge of that mesh board. All right, now that I've got this thing tight, I'm gonna just snug it a little bit. Double check myself. I'm ready to go. Okay, that is the completion of the first row. There's 42 loops around this and, and uh, with that said, I think we're going to move on for the sake of time because I'm eating up the time here. I want to move on to a net that I have went ahead of time. And you want to put uh, seven plain rows as ideal before you start your widenings. Now, a widening is an expander. I had a lady tell me one time, I was demonstrating stuff somewhere with, for a bunch of ladies that, that knitted and crocheted and stuff. And the lady, uh, when I was demonstrating the widening, the lady said, that's an expander. I said, very well put. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. It, without it, that expands that net. It's like making a doily. Ladies that make these little doilies that are round, they have to put, they put wideners in it. In other words, they wouldn't have a round. They wouldn't have a circle. No, just I tie this line on here to keep it from slipping and sliding on the needle. Now, okay. This is the seventh row. Notice there's no widens in it yet, but that's what it should look like. All right, let me zoom in. See how pretty that is? I'm open that up. See how pretty that net's starting to look? Okay. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to continue on. I'm going to, uh, what I've done, I've left a couple of I've left a couple of mashes more to go here to uh, complete this row. Then we're going to tie it in. I want to show that tie in again because that is so important. Now, I always uh, when I start up a new row or any or when I, after I empty the mesh board, I like to put two mashes on there. That keeps it uh, keeps it nice and snug. Now I'm to the point. I'm going to show you the two different knots. We were doing the old knot. This is the old knot. The old the old Spanish knot has been around for literally thousands of years. It's simple. You pick up that mesh. Slow. You bring it down to the top of that board. See how I'm pulling it nice and tight? And I'm going to throw my circle. Throw a loop. Not a circle. It's a loop. Then I'm going to come in between. Can you see that, Phil? Let me zoom in. See oh. where that needle is coming right in between those two? That's important that you get it between the two you want. Now I'm going to reach up here like this and I'm going to snap tie. See, I've tied that knot. Uh, I don't like this knot because what happens with it, it has a tendency to, uh, to slip. As long as you tie it up on top of the loop, you're okay. I'm going to do one more. Come in, I'm going to pick up that mesh. I'm going to bring it right down to the top of that board and hold it super tight. Pinch it with your fingers. Hold on. You want to zoom that, Phil? Where you can see how I'm holding that? See, I'm pinching it with my thumb and that end finger. I don't know what you call the end finger. But I'm going to pull it nice and tight. I'm going to hold it. I'm going to throw my loop. Come very gently back. I'm going to come in between here. Now, I'm going to show you like we did early on. I'm going to do, do this a double tie. This, this uh, ties a much better knot than the first one. This one won't slip. If you do it right, it won't slip. All right, that is completed. All right, well, it's completed row number seven. Now, I'm going to take this thing, and I'm going to tie it in. So I take it. I'm going to do that again. Can you see this, Phil? Where well, they can see it. I'm throwing my loop. I'm going to come in with the needle through the needle. I mean, through, the, through that uh, my opening. Grab my tail, and here we go. See what we've got here? See how that slides up and down easily? That's a knot, but don't, for goodness sake, don't tie it down there. I'm gonna slide, come on up here to where it goes. And I'm gonna take, and take my gauge, and you wanna be concerned with the, the knot on, the, on your left that's coming from the tail. You want to make sure that's the one that's even to the leading edge of this board. All right, and I'm going to tie a knot. By the way, I start these with num uh, bonded nylon, number six bonded nylon. I like to start the net with, because this is where your hand's going to be. When, you, when you're fishing with this thing, you, you're going to grab that top up where the horn's at, so that's why you use a heavier line up at the top. Sorry, I forget. I should have mentioned that early on, but uh, better late than never, but yeah, this is number six, then I'll come down a foot or so and I'll drop uh, to a number five and I'll go down about two feet, two, three feet, depending on how long I want to make the net, then I'll drop down to four and go down a couple, and my last foot, I'll go back to uh, about eight rows of, uh, uh, of number uh, uh, five and then the last four rows of number six. In a double row. A double row is simply this right here. That's double. You double your line and you, you're going to put a row on the bottom with that being double. All right, now let me double check this. What do I got to do? I got to snug that a little bit. You have to work it just a little bit. Sometimes you'll get it perfect, sometimes you won't. Most of the time you won't. All right, that is a completion of row number seven, and now we are ready for widenings. Uh, I don't know what else to call them. They've been called that as long as I can remember. Uh, I've, I've found some diagrams of, a, of a, uh, showing the starting of a, of a handmade net from uh, 1761, and it clearly showed the knot that I'm going to demonstrate to you. It clearly showed it. 
I was surprised because I thought that what we call the English knot, as Menorcans call the English knot, was much later. By the way, that's that's ebony. I think it's what's called white ebony. Look at beautiful grains to it. I love making needles out of ebony, black ebony and white ebony. All right, now I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna tie this first for myself. Then I'm gonna de I'll demonstrate this, but I gotta bring one down to the board here where you can uh, get a wash this thing. Cause it has a tendency to want to grab. You just have to work through that. I'm gonna pull this down. Get that first knot. All right, now I already showed you the old knot. Now, the new knot, I've heard this called a flying Dutchman. Uh, I want to, uh, I'm ready for my winder, so before I go too far, I'm going to tie just one. I'm going to tie just one knot. Then I'm going to come in here and put my first widener. Now, this is important. <clears throat> Phil, you got to be able to show them this. You see where that needle is? I'm in between, I'm in between that first mesh I just tied, and the next one that I'm gonna tie, come right in between them. Simple way to put it. I'm gonna slide right in through there like this, and I'm gonna bring this down, and you don't pull it down. You leave that, you just snug it. See how I'm holding that, nice and snug. Right. Then I'm gonna throw a loop, and you double tie your widenings. That's the only double tying you do the rest of the way. Yeah, let me see the, the finish. As I'm going to come and back. And I'll zoom in. Okay, and I'm going to double tie. Nice and tight. All right. Hold now, your hand there. Hold your hand. Rotate a little. Can you see it? I'll take it off and demonstrate it in a minute. Okay. After we do two or three. So they can see that loop. Yeah. Now, I put in a widening. I'm going to do three plain, three plain, then another wideness. So here's here's number one. Here's number one. I'm going to do this with the old knot for the sake of making sure you understand this. I'm going to pull this thing down like that. Okay. Phil, you use this knot, don't you? Yes. Okay, that's number one, and count. Number one, number two, and number three. I'm ready for another wider. Okay, I'm going to pause a minute. Tell me when. Go. All right, now, okay, I've tied three plain mashes, and Phil's got a little different angle here. Hopefully, it can show it a little bit clearer for you. I'm going to put in widening number two. You see this space here? I just tied a knot, right? That's the mesh I just tied. Here's the next one I'm going to tie. What I want to do, again, repeat myself, and I'm going to come in between those two with that needle. And I'm going to bring it down, hold it. As you can see, I'm going to grip that thing with my fingers. And make sure I pinch down on it, keep that thing pretty and tight. That's what you want to see. you got to hold your hands steady. Don't move it too much. Okay. Are we ready? Yep. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw my loop. I'm going to come in here in between, in between, double tie this, that's one way to do it, a little quick snap tie, and I got it. Now, to demonstrate the new knot, or it's been called, you hear them call it the Flying Dutchman, it's, this is a little more tricky, this takes some practice, but it's a it's far superior knot. I'm going to I'm going to come around, make sure I get a little cord. I'm going to come around that little finger. See how it came around that little finger? I'm gripping it to, on the bottom with this finger, holding it with, with my thumb. I'm going to throw it simply just, you just throw the same circle. And what you're going to do, you're going to come on the back side of that loop. Very important that you don't go through this way. You want to go through the back side of that loop, go through it. 
you're going to come up here and pick up the next mesh. Now, this is going to tie a double knot. What I'm doing, I'm pulling this through here like this. Here's your one knot coming up here, and here's your second one down on the bottom. And when you, when you feel tension, when you feel tension, you start pulling, you feel tension on that little finger. That's when you let it go. And see how smooth it ties that pretty knot. It's a smaller knot, and it's there. All right, that's number one. Same thing. We're going to make that loop. We're going to come back. I hope I'm doing this slow enough for you. Come into through here. I came on on the back side of that loop. I pick up that mesh. My mullet kitty, he stays close by. I pull it up nice and snug. When I feel that tension, I'll let it go. All one motion. It'll have a tendency to grab your little finger, but you have to, some of this stuff you just have to work out. All right, I'm going to pause and go to the other side, okay? Go. Okay, now we're going to try this at another angle. Hopefully we can get this a little more clear for you. I'm going to come around that little finger, keep it out near the end. I'm going to throw that loop. I'm going to come in on the back side. Keep this tight, by the way. You want to keep that thing tight. I'm going to come on the back side. You hold it right there and you can zoom in. See what I'm doing? I'm going to come through that loop, come through that loop on the back side. I'm going to come through and I'm going to pick up that mesh and I'm going to pull it down. See how nice and tight I pull it up against it? I feel pressure pulling on that little finger, so I'm going to let on. it go. Let me take a look. Don't let it go too soon. Don't keep it taunt. Until you feel that pressure. See, I'm moving that finger with it. I'm going to let it go. Tight or not. All right, that was number three. What comes after number three? It's going to be a widening. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in here in between that mesh you just saw me tie. The next one I'm going to tie, I'm going to come in between them. Freeze right there. Good. Go. And come up through there. And pull us down. Keep it nice and snug. Make my loop. I'm going to show you the other way to do this, or if you want to choose to do it this way. But it's got to be a double knot any way you go about it, whether you do it one behind the other or the two together. But anyway, that's the way it's done. Okay, now with that, I think you're pretty much ready. Ready, I'll do one more because we, we're running a lot of time here. I'll show you one more time. And we'll come around that little finger. You see that? You get that good feel? See what I did? I've come around that little finger. I've made my loop. I've come in here on the back side, through that loop, pick up my mash, coming through, pull it down up to it. I'm feeling pressure, I let it go. All right, that's number one. Number two. And number three. What comes next? I just tied a mesh. Here's my next one. I'm going to come on the bottom side of the board, bottom side of the board, I'm going to come in between the two, as you can see, and this is the winding. Alright, come through, I'm going to just go ahead and do a double. I think we pretty well got you started, uh, I'll show you how to uh, different stages right up to the point of the windings. Demonstrated both knots. Uh, a quick rewind. The old Spanish knot is simply you just pick up the mesh like this. You bring it down to your board. Uh, this is the easier one, but it's a tendency to slip on you. But I'm going to uh, I'm gonna double tie it. I don't like uh, having any chance of it slipping. That's, that's a demonstration of that knot. Then the Flying Dutchman, I simply call it the English knot. Menorcans, we have different terminology because my ancestors, I've been doing this stuff uh, near about 70 years. That's 7-0. Uh, 
That's a long time I've been making nets. But anyway, that's the way it's been called ever since I can remember. Anyway, uh, around, my, around the little pinky, throw in my loop, pick up that mesh, feel that snug against that finger, and tie. There we have it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to, uh, you can find me all over the internet. Just uh, be on YouTube, and I've got a website called uh, MenorcanMagic.com. That's M-E-N-O-R-C-A-N-M-A-G-I-C.com. One word, Menorcan Magic, one word. We have a website. I've got some nice pictures on there of nets. If you're interested in buying a net, I can sure sell you a net out of a, a nylon or Dacron. So, uh, or if you have any questions, you can, you'll find my, my email on that website. Feel free to email me or call me, 904-824-5354. Uh, uh, Happy to help you in any way. So, with that said, I think you're ready to uh, ready to get started.